The Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2012 is not the most star-studded field in history. In addition to senior selection Jack Butler, the five recent retirees to get the nod were running back Curtis Martin, defensive tackle Cortez Kennedy, defensive end Chris Dolman, center Dermonte Dawson, and tackle Willie Rofe. Now Martin rushed for over a thousand yards for 10 straight years, and the other four could all be considered among the top five to ever play their respective positions. And yet, perhaps because of the understated nature of the inductees, just zero Super Bowl wins among them, there's an overwhelming feeling that the biggest story of the 2012 class is the players and coaches who were passed over. For example, how does Curtis Martin, the NFL's fourth all-time leading rusher, get into the hall while the league's fourth all-time receiver, Chris Carter, gets overlooked? Sure, Curtis compiled slightly more yardage throughout his career, but Carter scored 30 more touchdowns, retiring with 131 touchdowns. That's eighth all-time, and the only people ahead of him on that list are either in the hall or not eligible yet. And while we're talking about snubs, how about Bill Parcells? He led the Giants to two Super Bowl victories in five years, and some of his disciples, Bill Belichick, Tom Coughlin, Sean Payton, are among the best coaches in the game today. Welcome to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, where one of the greatest coaches of our sport has ever known is not a member. Now this isn't to take away from the year's inductees who are all deserving. The problem is the process. The Hall of Fame panel consists of 44 journalists who serve for life. The panel skews old, white, and male and consists of shameless jock sniffers like Michael Wilbon and bloviating relics like Woody Page. That stodgy crew of gatekeepers is limited to just five inductees every year regardless of the candidate's worth. And I get it. Rules are rules and you want to ensure that the Hall of Fame remains exclusive. But the Hall has rules that are a detriment to its cause and the voters are too happy in their exclusive little circle to campaign for change. It stinks, and it's not going to get any better. Now, the only consolation for the game's greats that the Hall snubs? No one looks good in that ugly yellow jacket. What do you think? Who got snubbed? Does the Hall of Fame even matter, or are you just happy the football season's back? Let us know in the comments, and for more on the NFL, subscribe to SB Nation. We'll see you soon.